I want to discuss the concept of free cash flow and then show you an example of how you compute it and then I'll show you how you can use it to value a firm. So free cash flow is defined as the money a company has left over after paying its operating expenses and capital expenditures. And we can use the concept of free cash flow um, to value a firm by taking the present value of all the firm's free cash flows. So the formula for free cash flow is EBIT times 1 minus the tax rate plus depreciation minus capital expenditures minus any changes in net working capital. And you add back in depreciation because it's a non-cash expense. So you have to take it out when you're computing taxes, but you want to put it back in because you're not actually paying anybody for that. So let's take a look at an example here. So we have a case where EBIT is 8,000 in the first year, 9,000 in the second, 12,000 in the third. We're going to have the same depreciation each year of 1,000. Capital expenditures in year one are 500, in year two are 300, and in, uh, in year two or 300, year three are 700. And net working capital, net working capital, remember, is current assets minus current liabilities. So if you're selling something, you have to make an investment in things like inventory and accounts receivable. And this can go up or it can go down. And, you know, if you think about, for example, a um, someone selling calendars at Christmas time at the mall, they have a kiosk set up there and they have to invest in an inventory of calendars so they have something to sell. So here it's 100 in year one, 250 in year two, and 300 in year three. But what we need is we need the change in net working capital. So we have to calculate this change and the change in time period T is going to be the time, the change in time period, uh, or actually the net working capital in period T minus the previous period's net working capital. And to get ourselves started, let's assume that in year zero, net working capital is zero. So the change from year zero to year one is 100 minus zero. And then in year two, it was 250 was net working capital, but it was 100 in year one, so it increased by 150. And then in year three, um, it's 300. And we had 250 the previous period, so it increased by 50. So using the formula we have, we can now calculate free cash flow for each of these three years. So EBIT times 1 minus the tax rate, okay, plus the depreciation, minus the capital expenditure, minus any change in net working capital. And if you do the math, you get 6,400 here for year one you get 7300 for year 2 and you get 9250 for year 3 so now that you have the free cash flows we might like to use this to value the firm so in order to do that let's make a couple of assumptions here um, suppose that the free cash flows will grow at a 3% rate forever after year 3 and let's assume that the cost of capital is 12%. So what we need to do first is we need to calculate the terminal or the horizon value. So that's going to be the value of all the future cash flows from year four to infinity. Remember, we have the cash flows from years one, two, and three, but you know the project doesn't stop there. We're gonna assume that these cash flows keep going on. And the assumption here is that the year three cash flow uh, will start growing at a 3% rate every year forever. So this is just like that dividend discount model. So we're going to take that year three cash flow. We're going to multiply it by 1.03 because we need the cash flow or the free cash flow one period in the future. And we divide it by the cost of capital minus the growth rate. And we get 105 
1861. And now we can just finish the present value equation, present value of the first free cash flow in year one, plus the present value of the free cash flow in year two, plus the present value of the free cash flow in year three, plus the horizon value. Remember, we're, we're doing this calculation, so the free cash flow um, or the terminal value in year three is going to be equal to the free cash flow in year four divided by R minus G. And if you take the present value of all of this, you get 93,467.54. So those are the steps for, or at least one approach for valuing a firm. Find the free cash flow, and then find the terminal value, and then take the present value of all of this.